Okay. Um, in our closed session, student hearing, uh, expulsion hearing, uh, 07-18-19, action for violation of the California Education Codes, 48,900K, 48, 48,900.2. Uh, the board has decided to expel the student and then suspend the expulsion with order um, with conditions. Expulsion order with conditions. Motion made by Ms. Grant, seconded by. I'll, I'll second. Mr. Bender, all in favor? Aye. 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 Four ayes, one absent. That was. The recording of this meeting is being made and shall be kept for 30 days as public record. Everybody stand for pledge. I am here. Linda is here. Yolanda is absent. Carol is here. Mr. Bender is here. We have Ms. Gattis, and Giovanna is not here. Is there a motion for the agenda? I make a motion to move the agenda. Second. Second by Ms. Brandt. I'll second. Second by Mr. Bender. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do you have any? No. Can we dispense with the public comments? ASP board member report. Um, just like last week, there are two scholarship options offered to seniors, uh, the RHS staff scholarship and the RTA scholarship. Can you guys hear? Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Neil Torres. I am the principal of Alternative Education. As the slideshow says, welcome to Alternative Education. I think I need some help with this. There it is. Uh, the first school or program that we'd like to showcase is the Ascend Academy. We have a few things to brag about. We continue to thrive with more hands-on learning. These include class projects and experiments. This year, what the teachers have done is they've taken the lessons and they've incorporated uh, different kind of projects for the students to engage in and show what they have and have not learned. Um, one of the most interesting experiments that, experiments that we had this year was with, in Mr. Deal's class. He was teaching the students about the different layers of the earth with the soil and he did it all with edible materials. Um, he had, uh, he bought these rocks 
we thought they were rocks, but I guess you go to a candy store, they look like rocks, but they're made out of chocolate. He ground up graham crackers to look like the sand. Um, he used Oreo cookies to make topsoil, and he couldn't find a good substitute for red clay, so he ground up Takis. The kids loved it, they had a blast, they put everything together, and then when they were done, they were able to eat their way to the core of the earth. So it was a very fun experiment, they really had a great time with that. Um, we've seen a lot of improvement in behaviors when the kids are on the playground. Um, in previous years, some of our students would interact with each other and passerbys in a negative manner. This year, we've been working on providing coaching on better ways to interact with each other and with anyone who passes by our fences. We're very happy to report that we've seen a 15% drop in negative exchanges. And I would attribute this to our counselor, Alicia Cambalisa, who issued a challenge to all the students and has been working with them and taught them other ways to express themselves in a more positive manner. Also, um, we have our first senior this year, Michael Adams. He is in the process of completing all of his remaining credits and will be graduating with his classmates from Rosemont High School in June. We're very proud of Michael. Um, we also have a same student, Michael Adams, who has been accepted into Job Corps, which is located in Long Beach. He's very excited and we're very proud of this accomplishment. Uh, Job Corps, for those that don't know, is a program administered by the US, United States Department of Labor that offers free of charge education and vocational training to young men and women ages 16 to 24. He will be moving to Long Beach after, gradu after graduating and will start the program shortly after. At the present moment, Michael is working at the Rite Aid in Rosemont with Job Corps. He'll be pursuing cosmetology. I've already asked him for my first haircut to be on the house because we gave him so much help. Abraham Lincoln is another school that I am very proud to be associated and to lead. Um, we see an increase of the number of students return to their home schools. Um, at the present moment, we've had eight students that have completed their necessary um, classes to get caught up and or have been able to um, return to their home schools. So we're very happy about that. Um, also, we have increased participation in award ceremonies and assemblies. Uh, we've invited Abraham Lincoln and their families to join us for our monthly Student of the Month assemblies, perfect attendance, and quarterly awards assemblies. Um, in the past, I know that we had limited participation. Parents seem to be more excited this year. They're coming in with their kids, even if it's not their scheduled appointment time, and they're participating in the assembly. Um, what we do at the end of the assembly is in the media center of Rare Earth, we have a wall and we put up all of our student of the month. We've added and made them a little bit larger now to include the Abraham Lincoln kids. And the parents love that. And of course the kids will get whatever we're awarding that, that month, whether it's a chocolate bar, donut, whatever. They're just happy to be a part of the bigger collective group. Um, also extra opportunities for students, for students attending Abraham Lincoln. Um, we're always on the lookout for new electives. What we found with the help of Mrs. Haro is that there is a program called the Young Eagle Program. The Young Eagle Program is um, a program sponsored by a local um, pilot club. What they do is they take kids up for discovery flights. And if the student or the young man or young lady finds out that she enjoys learning how to fly, they will sponsor that student uh, through flight school up to it, including with parental consent, of course, where they could apply for their private pilot's license. So far, we've had one student accepted into this, and I believe he started in October, and he's getting close to completing um, ground school, and pretty soon he'll be taken to the air. So we're excited about that, to, um, to offer that to our kids as well. Oops, went too far. Rare Earth. Um, at Rare Earth, uh, what we're looking for is, um, as a continuation high school, is better ways to prepare our students for the future. A lot of those kids that are with us at Rare Earth are there because they're credit deficient. So we started with what we're most proud of is more rigor. Now we have placed restrictions on the use of listening to music while working. In the past,
kids have always said, you know, I think better, I work better when I'm listening to music, and it was something that was allowed to them. What we're doing now is that the kids who are falling behind are not keeping with the pace, their phones in the morning go into what's called phone jail. So they know they come in in the morning, if they haven't been doing their job, they just come into the office, they hand in their phone, we give them a, like a little ticket, a little receipt, and then they get to work. Uh, we've also set a goal for them that um, they need to complete 30 lessons a week or 120 per month. In meeting with all of the rare earth teachers, we have um, come to the conclusion that if they're able to keep this pace, then they will be able to complete the necessary credits for a semester. Now, the beauty of rare earth is that the students can also work at home. They have that ability, they have that option. And what we have seen is that there are more kids that are interested in getting caught up faster. Um, at the present moment, we have six seniors that have graduated early and one junior that has returned to Rosemont High School because she has caught up with all of her credits. And when she returned to Rosemont High School, um, we had actually miscalculated. She actually went back with 10 additional credits that she did not need. So she was very happy. She's looking forward to playing sports in the spring. So we are very happy to you know, send her back to Rosemont High School. Um, the rest of the kids at the present moment, with the six that have graduated early, which we've all committed that they need to come back and walk in May with us, we have two more that will probably be completing it by mid-March. Um, so they are really buckling down, they're working hard, they're taking this to heart. Um, and one of the ways that we motivate the kids is that when they meet their goal of 120 lessons per month, we celebrate at the end of the month, we give them the day off, we get them some pizza, we give them some free time. And the way that we keep the kids motivated on this is on a weekly basis, we post for them how many lessons they have completed. So they know who's in first place, who's in last place, who's doing whatever. And it also gives the teachers during advisory time a chance to sit down with the students that are falling behind or not keeping up the pace and counsel them. Find out what's going on, what's going on with their lives, what's happening at home that's preventing them from keeping up with the pace that we've set. Um, this month so far, we have six students that will be participating at the end of the month. And we would have had more, but three of them graduated early here in February, so they weren't able to join us at the end of the month. Um, it's also fun because a lot of the students um, are very competitive and they're challenging each other. I mean, you'll hear, kids, you'll hear a couple of boys standing outside going, hey, I did 32 lessons last week. I bet you can't catch me this week. So it's the friendly banter going back and forth. It's something visual and it makes them want to work just a little bit harder. Um, with school pride, um, when I got, first got to Rare Earth, what we noticed is a lot of kids kind of had that feeling that, eh, I'm here, what's the big deal? I'll get to it whenever I get to it. Um, and it's funny, the funniest thing is that um, what we did is we, we reached out to Live Touch Photos and we said, hey, we'd like to set up a photo day. Can you just come down, set it up? And it was amazing how many parents bought the packets. But more importantly, what the kids loved the best is they got an ID. My understanding is this is the first time that Abraham Lincoln or Rare Earth had an ID and the kids loved it. And the biggest motivator was now they were able to get into all the sporting events at the high school or use a student ID to get a discount and that has really got them excited about that. Um, another thing that we used to build school, school pride is something that was in place when I got there. Whenever we have a senior that graduates early, we make a big deal about it. We make an announcement over the PA system, we get pomp and circumstance over the PA system, and the kids do the walk of fame. So they start at the back of the school, walk the sidewalk all the way up, we take their picture um, by one of the trees, and that gets posted up in the media center as well. So everybody gets to see this person graduated early. And then again, it's a motivator that you want to be that, you want to have that walk of fame, so they work a little bit harder to get what they need to get done. Also, what we are working on and under future plans is that um, for the spring, Life Touch is going to come out and we're going to get a panoramic picture taken of the entire school, Abraham Lincoln and Rare Earth something that we can start in our media center just posting along the top. I think, I know when I go back to my high school, I like going up and seeing my senior class um, panoramic picture up on the wall. 
you know, it's fun. You show your kids and they sit, they laugh at you. You know what your hair looked like back then, how you dressed back there. For me, it was a long, long time ago. So it's, you know, a source of entertainment for them. But it'd be fun for these kids to come back also and to say, hey, look, this is when I graduated and their picture would be up there. Also, some of the kids came up and they asked if it would be okay if they painted a mural on the back of one of the classrooms. First thing I asked is, what kind of mural are we talking about? And it's funny because what they want to do is they want to start by making a big mural um, to just list all the senior classes. So it would look like an open book with the coyote, our coyote motto or mascot in the center. And then they would just list like class of 2019 and it would list the names of all the seniors that graduated. They thought that would be something really great for them just to have up there. And then we also have banners up that, said, that talks about Coyote Pride, and they were wondering if they could sit there and paint that on the classrooms instead of the banners, because with the high winds, a lot of times we're chasing the banners into ascent. So they thought something more permanent would be nice. Um, and we've already received some donations of paint cans from parents or just from relatives that they have, so we're just waiting for it to dry up and for permission, and then we can start that project. I'm guessing it'll probably be mid to late March when things start to dry up and it's a little bit better. And that's just a few things that we are doing at Alternative Ed. We're having a great time, we're working hard, and we're ready for spring break. Thank you. First of all, board, I'd like to again recommend that uh, with CSEA, we might want to start alternating RTA and CSEA at meetings. I think that would be more appropriate rather than RTA going first every time. Um, secondly, especially to the new board members, I want you to understand that I'm not always as negative as you get to hear lately. Um, by nature, I search for solutions. I try to fix things. My former students could uh, attest that it's all about going through a process uh, going through a process properly and finding the right answer. Like you said, we're in a situation right now that, that is especially challenging. And you, I'm going to touch upon one thing where RTA wants to be part of those solutions, but is having difficulty doing so. Um, something on a, on a positive note to begin with, uh, the RTA calendar committee has been working with Mrs. Hargis and the district, uh, uh, district administration also the board subcommittee on the calendar for next year, the 2019-2020 calendar. 
Um, the RTA committee members, my wife Lori Qualman and also John Warfield served on that committee. Um, this has gone especially well this year, probably because I stayed out of it. Um, and also because it's a calendar that's very, very similar to the calendar we have this year. So they had a couple of meetings. Uh, it went very well. We've agreed, or they've agreed on a tentative calendar. Uh, like I said, it's very similar to this year. Uh, at yesterday's RTA Executive Board meeting, the uh, board voted to overwhelmingly or, or unanimously endorse the calendar. So I'm sure it'll be on the, an upcoming board agenda. And so at least we can take something and, and get it taken care of and, and put it on the uh, Put it on the back burner. Back burner. Uh, obviously, I'm going to talk about the board RIF resolution from last week. Uh, I have a meeting tomorrow with the 26 teachers that have been served layoff notices. Um, my meeting will be to discuss with them what their rights to a hearing are, uh, their rights to rehire, uh, a chance to challenge their place in the layoff order. Uh, this is going to be costly. It's going to be costly to RTA. It's going to be costly to the district because, of course, we have to pay lawyers to do all of this. Um, I'm estimating somewhere between four and eight thousand dollars cost to each of us, uh, but it is a process that we must go through to make sure that all of the layoffs are proper and appropriate. Um, so I have 26 teachers that are on the layoff list. I want to keep reminding the board about that. I also have something that is not as well known. I have 15 teachers that are now being displaced out of their current teaching positions. And after, uh, after Mr. Torres' very, uh, very uh, positive presentation uh, of what's going on at Alternative Ed, some of those teachers are at that site and won't have that opportunity to continue what they're doing there right now because with the layoffs, teachers are having to be reassigned to other positions uh, probably positions that they're, they would rather not be reassigned to, but must be. They'd probably rather stay in the positions they're in to continue this great work that they're doing. Uh, again, I, I need to work carefully and closely with the district and HR to make sure that all of these displacements are done properly and that people are in their positions and that they understand their rights uh, to those things. Um, and I apologize because I just kind of threw this together tonight. Uh, more of a uh, less prepared presentation. Um, based on what we discussed last week, I'm interested to hear what the board has to say about what the process is going to be to start looking at the possibility and actual bringing back of programs that have now been cut due, due to the RIF resolution. Uh, we heard last week that the county projected, I believe, somewhere around a $3.6 million reserve uh, by June 2021, which is somewhere between 6 and 8 percent, well above the requirement. Um, so the district has and the board has a little bit of money to play with. So how it, are we going to look at possibly retaining some of these programs for next year? Not for the year after that, but for next year. Um, the board expressed the idea of wanting to look at options, so I'd like to hear what that process is going to be um, to consider the possibility of restoring some of the, this program, some of these programs. And more importantly, if the board wants a program back, what's the county's role going to be in it? Is the county just going to veto it? Have you, through the RIF resolution, have you really tied your own hands? That is a question you need to ask our county advisors if you find the need to restore a program and you have the desire to restore a program and it can be paid for, will the county approve it or will it just veto it like it has done everything else that we've needed this year? Um, and remember those programs that are on the table. Of course, elementary PE was talked a lot about last week. Uh, Mr. Bender, you mentioned that, of course, one of the uh, advantages for elementary PE is providing prep time for those teachers. Um, I think there was a little bit of a misunderstanding there. It's not 20 minutes a day. It's 40 minutes twice a week, as opposed to the secondary teachers who get 50 to 55 minutes every single day for prep time. We need to provide this time for the teachers, but it's not about prep time. It is absolutely not about prep time. It's about providing a quality physical education program for our students that the classroom teachers cannot provide to meet state standards. In some instances, they aren't qualified to provide. Their multiple subject credential does allow them to be teach uh, PE, but the new state standards require more training to teach PE, and if our teachers, many of which have not had that training, the district is going to have to provide that extra training. 
and that's going to cost a bunch of money as well. Uh, of course, Southern Current Prep Academy, we've talked about that. It's a unique pr program that I am sure will not continue in its current design at Abraham Lincoln. Um, Read 180 at the elementary schools for low-performing students at fourth and fifth grade. In fact, I think, I think on your agenda tonight, there's some discussion about low-performing students and what can be done for them. Uh, I mentioned the digital media program, the CTE program at the high school, helping to prepare students for college and career. Probably the only good part up to this point is at least, I think, we've got things in place to, to make sure we're able to keep the ROTC program for next year. Part of the savings is very disappointing. Part of the savings we are going to have is very, very disappointing. We've already got teachers leaving the district. Veteran quality teachers, highly trained, highly qualified teachers are leaving the district because of the problems we have and because of the leadership that, that we need provided by this board and by the district administration. Uh, I've already seen three letters of uh, offers of employment of some of our veteran teachers to other districts and there are going to be more. So, you know, that, that is a, a terrible tragedy to this situation for our district. It's gonna save us money. We're gonna end up hiring teachers to replace them at lower positions on the salary schedule, but not as qualified. Uh, so we are gonna have more money than probably is in the projections. Maybe we can at least save a little something in that money to restore some of these programs. The last thing is, uh, I've been very frustrated this week because uh, with all of this going on, 26 teachers being laid off, 15 teachers that have been served notices of displacement, which by the way, the notices they got talked about the RIF resolution and I got a bunch of emails from those teachers thinking they've been laid off when they're actually being displaced. Uh, RTA needs reasonable access to district administration, to the HR department, to the other teachers. Now, RTA does have leave time built into our contract. I have five days, it might even be 10 days of leave time uh, that I can take at district cost where the district has to provide subs so that I can meet with these people. Problem is I wanted to meet with HR Tuesday of this week in the morning because it happened to be a situation where it fit my classes. My students are doing review. It wasn't gonna impact what they were doing. I needed to meet with Lisa Lopez over at HR to go over every one of these uh, layoffs and displacements but I was told that the district was not going to provide me with an appointment because it was gonna cost for coverage for my classes. Well, I know it's gonna cost a little bit of money for coverage for my classes. I get that. I probably could have gone to my teachers and they probably would have done it for free, but that's not appropriate. I need to have reasonable access to meet with the teachers, to meet with uh, HR when necessary, to meet with district administration, so that questions could be answered. I'm getting barraged by emails every day. And the only time I'm being given the opportunity to take care of this stuff is during my prep period and after school. That, that's, not, that's not enough. These teachers deserve my time and my attention, and so do my students. I can balance all this. I can take care of it without impacting my classroom, I promise. But I need to be given reasonable access when I ask for it. So I hope the board and the district administration will provide that with me. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, we're a bit surprised not to see the classified riff action on the agenda tonight. Uh, we do hope that you give yourself sufficient time to sit with us at the negotiation table. Once there, we hope you can take our suggestions into consideration. We understand the need for cuts, but our ideas and suggestions to help save money without directly affecting the student's education, um, these usually fall upon deaf ears. And we really hope that we could work as a team to lift each other out of this crisis. Um, so please do not delay this process and uh, join us at the negotiation table with a more open mind than we have been seeing as of late. Because um, right now a lot of our classified employees are feeling like they're floating in limbo and they would much rather have a solid answer as to their employment next year so they could plan their next career opportunities if necessary. Um, 
And uh, thank you, Mr. Coleman, for you know that suggestion of maybe swapping every now and then. Uh, it's very kind. You know, uh, that sort of stuff helps us seem like we're not marginalized as employees; that we are equal. Because you know, teachers, uh, RTA, and classified, we really help each other out, and we couldn't do our jobs without each other. You know, so uh, that that does mean a lot, even if it's a you know, small issue to some. Uh, so, thank you, everybody. State tax revenues for December and January uh, fell short by $2.3 billion. Uh, half the state's revenues go towards ed education, so we don't really <coughs> our bottom line until a revised budget comes out in May. Uh, there's no real reason given other than federal taxes have had an effect that they couldn't uh, count on. Uh, if you've heard recently, Tax returns have been lower than people expected. And it's kind of affecting the state's tax revenue as well. Uh, a lot of the tax revenue from the state comes from capital gains. So as the stock market declines, it does better. So the state revenues. But it was a $2.3 billion shortfall in terms of what they expected to receive. And we applied for the state grants for the kindergarten and preschool facilities. Uh, OPSC, the state organization that manages it, they acknowledged our application and our hardship application as well. Uh, we were the only school district in Kern County to apply for it. So uh, I don't know what that means, but I was told that by the county. Uh, they, we applied for both our elementary schools, and I don't, I don't know what the timeline is in terms of their uh, funding these projects, but there is more money in the governor's budget earmarked for this, and we'll know in June how much more there is. So as long as we're on the list, we'll eventually get funding for this. That's it. Vouchers, uh, 
1.30 for, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the head of chiropractic, what's that? Say that, I can't hear that. Transportation for head chiropractic, what is that for? Physical for drivers. Oh, for, for who? Physical for drivers. For drivers? For transportation for? Oh, okay, for all right. The, uh, transportation for? Another septic tank and an eleven hundred and fifty dollar. We worth. did. We went to three three different companies for the pumping, and the value came in at the lowest. So the open PO is meant to be able to call them out when we need them. Okay. Um, at TMS, even after we pumped it, not not a month later, it was pretty full already. So I'm not really sure why that hasn't occurred in the past. To have the, the septic system full that quickly. Yeah. And they're older <laughs> systems, so uh, anything can happen. But Valley was the, the lowest cost between three other vendors, three vendors. Okay. So we have an open PO with them now. So okay, to call them out. Explain that to me now. What is that one? That's the, the school at risk management? Yeah, there are workers' comp and property liability insurance providers. Okay. Uh, that's for two quarters of the fiscal year. So from July until uh, Jan uh, until December of this fiscal year. They have much money, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it's a percentage, workers' comp is a percentage of uh, our salary. So every dollar in salary, we pay 2.3% uh, in the workers' bill. And you said before we went out and found a cheaper pay. Last year we paid 2.8%. The year before we paid 3.1%. Yeah, it's, um, we did have a meeting with them today to go over our how workers' comp has been going this year. Um, our, our costs are really low compared to um, what we've experienced in the past. Uh, we're able to get, get injuries diagnosed quickly now uh, through a tele, uh, basically it's a service that an employee is able to call. It's an RN on the phone, they're able to diagnose them on the phone and either recommend them to go see a doctor or uh, if it's a minor injury, recommend treatment for that. So we're, we're able to get on top of it as soon as it happens. That's helped a lot. We only have three open cases right now from this this year that, um, that may last through the year in terms of treatment. So we're really uh, encouraged by our progress. And these rates are good for this year and next year. So hopefully we do well in these two years. We'll see lo even lower late rates the following years. Uh, we, the last three years, we've had the highest workers' comp rate in Kern County in the school district. Uh, by far, not a few percentage points, by standard, standard deviations. More. Um, so we have to take action. I think the action we've taken has really helped in terms of lowering our costs and just having a better workers' comp rate. <coughs> No, the, is this, we get the, the you said 2.1% for the whole district? Or is it, right. Because now. like, it, I, I know for uh, different fields, it's a different percentage. Uh, 
administration? We can't break it to the maintenance to administration? No. They won't let us do that? No, it's based on total salary. Yeah, they, they review case history for 10 years of workers' comp claims, and they base their rates on those. The school's district? Yeah. And they generate loss runs, so they analyze what their losses we've suffered in terms of workers' comp costs over the last 10 years, and they base their rates on that. I approve. It's 
not something that we can use to necessarily fund a program because again, we don't want to start funding programs with one kind of money. So this is um, really what, what we have discussed is continuing our, uh, we've been working for the last couple of years on our continuous improvement process, so we will continue that, um, that work and um, our, some of our intervention programs, but um, the Capturing Kids Hearts and um, PBIS program. So school groups must develop a plan describing how we're going to use the funds um, to increase or improve evidence-based services for students that are identified um, with this plan. Um, the plan shall include information regarding how the services align with our LCAP. So some of the um, interventions that we currently, we have started with Capturing Kids Hearts. Um, we'll also be offering a training towards the summer, and, and this is something that is for classified, it's for certificated, we'd like to train everyone. Um, the difficult part of that is the training is very, very expensive, um, and it requires about 50 participants per session. Um, and so for us to take 50 um, certificated and classified at any one time during the school year, um, that could be kind of catastrophic throughout the district if we didn't have enough substitutes. So um, we're kind of left to do it during the summertime. So it hampers us a little bit, but um, certainly once we get it going, I think it will be beneficial. Um, benchmark, system, benchmark assessments, um, IXL program, um, overdrive I read, which is a K2 reading intervention, and then um, our system 44 read 180. And one of the criteria was how are you going to measure student growth? Um, of course, we'll use our state assessments, we'll use our benchmark assessments. Um, we also will be looking at our suspension rate, our attendance um, percentages, and our discipline referrals. And um, again, how does it align with our LCAP? It fits in with goals one and two. Um, the district, we, our goal number one is to improve academic achievement for all, stu for all students. And some of our actions do include our benchmarks, professional development opportunities, and um, access to educational software. And then goal number two is developing a healthy school climate that supports the social, emotional, physical needs of all students. Um, capturing kids' hearts and uh, is what we're currently, um, we did hold the training last year, so we have little pockets of um, staff at each school site that are trained. So we have implemented that, but we're also um, working on our um, PBIS, which will be sending some teams from each school site um, the end of March. And so in order to ensure community and stakeholder input, the plan also asks us to bring it up for meeting, as I mentioned. So um, we are recommending um, that our plan be approved um, so that we can continue our continuous improvement process and improving um, academic achievement and school climate. Anybody have any questions?
2019 CSBA Delegate Assembly uh, Educational Subcommittee uh, Region 12B. There's four vacancies and there's four applicants. These are the people who actually uh, put together the, they look over all of the policies and recommend new policies uh, or reward the old policies to look in conjunction with uh, the uh, new laws that come out. So if anybody wants to write in their name and mm. be a uh, policy, a delegate, they may. Bring down Mario. <laughs> it does take up quite a bit of time. Uh, anyway, there's four applicants. If it was in your packet, if you guys want to uh, let them over, uh, I have no problem with letting these people go to Sacramento and do the <coughs> politicking for us. Well, we have to go to Sacramento. Oh, yes. Oh, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I is there funding to go to Sacramento? No. So, you have to get there yourself? Yes. If uh, everybody is okay with the people who are ready, I will make a motion that we accept the application as it is written. They're right there. You see them right there. On page two, page six. Page six. Page six. I'll second. Second by Ms. Brandt. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approve update to uh, current memorandum of understanding established and operate a our, our Air Force Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps unit effective. So this is our, um, our contract with the Air Force to maintain our ROTC program. Um, so that is up for approval. And then we also got a hard copy letter saying that originally it was, a, it was just an email saying that they were not going to move to close our program, but now we actually got a hard copy letter as well. Um, and we actually have an applicant, an officer applicant for our, his, our um, open position. So Wait a second, time out, time out. Sorry. I just had one question. Sure. Um, we talked about that 247000 When are we going to be able to sit down and talk about how that gets spent? I'd like to see, I mean, I'd, I'd like to see if, if, we, if we take it a little bit foot to everybody. It's, I, I really believe that our, our reading and our kindergarten through second grade needs to really be hit hard. That's our foundation, and we got to start a good foundation. Our schools are suffering, and, and we need to hit the kindergartens and the elementaries with money to help them get what they need to educate these kids better. Uh, yes. When they get that together from that hospital, uh, the grant has specific section that it has to be met. Uh, and it's up to them. been noted for 
through technical assistance. So the county the instructional piece has been helping us along with, you know, the, um, of course, the physical piece of that. But the last year and a half, two years, almost two years now, we've been working with them to improve our, you know, and sort of pinpoint our, our root causes and, and what we feel, you know, really has led to some poor achievement in different areas. So that's really what we're looking for, you know, is to continue that process, use that money. I would just, <clears throat> I know we've had uh, some hard decisions we had to make, and we made them, and um, it's just been on, i only been on here, what, month and a half or so, two months, and um, I hear all this stuff that we think about doing, but I, I feel like we're not doing anything. I'm, I'm getting a little frustrated. I want to, I believe we have to start at the foundation that we do a lot, we've got a lot of these little programs for our high school kids to get them to graduate. But we need to start down low in these elementary schools to where these kids go up into the seventh and eighth grade, that they're already founded in all the, all the important things. And when they fl overflow into our high schools, they can excel and do better. Um, it seems like we're constantly just trying to fix some students that get, just to get them through high school. And um, I'm just a little frustrated. I, I, I like to do more. I'm ready to get down and get working. and, and uh, Get these kids a better education, and it has to start down low. We have to build a good foundation. If we get money like this, I believe we've got to throw it at our, our young kids to better edu educate them. That's that's just where I'm sorry. Well, I, I'll say it one more time, um, but I believe that the uh, foundation for uh, for children is reading fluency and that if we train our teachers how to uh, conduct a reading fluency program so that our kids by the time they're out of second grade are reading and reading well that, that that's where I think money should be put because I, I, I tutor, I use reading fluency, and uh, I see kids, well, last year I had a student that was reading a, at uh, second grade level. She was in the, at the end of third grade, and she just brought me her, uh, her progress report that said she is right at grade level now. So she's in the fourth grade, reading at grade level, and it's just reading fluency. That's it. So it's, it's easy, but our teachers, I see teachers using the reading fluency component of our curriculum, but not correctly. They don't know how to use it. They send it home for homework or, you know, so that's my soapbox. So <laughs> I'll second. <laughs> second, Mr. Frederick. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All rise. All rise. Five days. Four. Yeah, it's time to go home. <laughs>